He's an exploiter. He's used people for personal gain way too many times and he keeps getting away with it. He had an opportunity to make serious money to entertain you and he wouldn't do it. You're milking a human. Oh, that Phil never got past level one. All of us are up here. He's down on level one. Stop watching Keemstar. There is a two-year feud going on between a locale, Darkseid Phil, also known as DSP, and Keemstar. We will dive into the origins of this feud going up through everything that happened through now. The first real encounter between Keemstar and DSP would happen when DSP accidentally livestreamed himself mad. This incident would have Keemstar make a show about Phil back in 2016 when this happened. DSP would then begin tagging Keemstar, potentially in hopes of being on this show. But after this, they wouldn't encounter each other for five years in any notable way until Keemstar announced his retirement. During the stream, DSP would be asked about Keemstar's retirement and DSP would trash on Keem. Kevin has now done a super chat and says, what do I think about Keemstar's retirement? I don't. I never watched a single piece of Keemstar's content during the time period that he made it. I don't care about him. All I know is that he is one of the original people who basically was a rumor monger, drama monger, and or person who caused a lot of personal pain for people so that he could get a buck. You know? Let's let's air everyone's dirty laundry, sometimes not even confirmed just rumors, on YouTube for my own personal benefit. Wow. What a nice guy, right? Sometimes you hear that a YouTuber is hanging it up and you're like, man, that's sad because this is someone who has a great legacy, but, you know, I hope them the best in their personal life. And, uh, and then there's sometimes when you say, Oh, someone's retiring? Oh, nothing of value is lost, so. This information would get back to Keemstar and he would make his own response video. Me and you have to have a little chat. It's recently come to my attention that you were talking shit about me on your stream. That's right, somebody donated money and asked you your thoughts and opinions on Keemstar's retirement and you said, you know what, I've never watched the guy. I don't watch Keemstar. I've never seen a single Keemstar video. Then you went on to say, all Keemstar does is lie about different creators, just slanders them, puts out nothing but fake news, something along those lines. Thought that was strange because I thought you never watched any of my videos. Also, I can remember a time where you were actually begging to come on my show. Yeah, I do remember that. You were begging to come on Drama Alert. Don't you remember that one time that you sat down at your streaming computer and you know you were looking at a little hub and you were fucking you were going to town just smacking that sausage right groaning and everything else and you know grabbed a little tissue cleaned up the mess that you made and then you noticed that you were streaming live <laughs> yeah we ran that story on fucking drama that was fucking hilarious you fucking beat off right in front of your fans so yeah, I get it. I get why you hate me because we covered that story. But there's a deeper reason on, on why you hate me. Me and you have been doing YouTube for about the same amount of time or gaming entertainment, whatever you want to say, uh, for the same amount of time. And I'm retiring, all right? I'm retiring with fuck you money. Never have to fucking work again. And you having the same career, you know, doing the same thing, you know, online entertainment stuff, you're still begging for $10 donations and $20 donations to pay your electric bill, to pay your fucking rent, all right? I get it. I'd hate me too. See ya, Phil. DSP would criticize Keemstar for punching down at an internet nobody, proving that DSP was right and had struck a nerve with him. Keemstar would make a response video criticizing Phil, saying that he was forever on Mission 1 despite being on YouTube for nearly 15 years and still begging for money. Dark Side Phil! Sir! I'm gonna have to call bullshit! You just accused me of two things. One, punching down like you're some type of victim or something. You were literally talking shit first. And two, you were basically saying that you struck a nerve with me. No, both are wrong. I'm very simple. If somebody talks shit to me, I talk shit back because it's entertaining to myself and it's entertaining to my viewers. So I figured I would leave by giving you some life advice. See, you're a gamer, all right? I'm also a gamer. And the thing is, is life, everything you fucking do in life, 
is a game. And at this game of life, I've beat the game. I beat the game. I used some money glitches, but I beat the game at life. You, Phil, you're still on mission one and you can't get anywhere and you're rage quitting and you're starting over and restarting and restarting. I mean, a decade ago, you were on stream begging for $20 and $10 donations so you could pay your rent. It's a decade later, you're begging for $10 and $20 to pay your rent. You're restarting mission one. You're trying to use the same tactic over and over again, and you're dying and you're having to restart the level. If you want to win at this game of life, you're going to have to fucking do something different. Now, I know it's an ongoing thing with people telling you to go get a real job, but you probably need to get a real fucking job. This would be Keemstar's final response to DSP for this time, but DSP couldn't help himself and would keep bringing up Keemstar whenever he could. I don't give two fucks about Keemstar. I don't want to talk about him ever again. Seriously, the guy's a waste of time in life. So I'm not even going to address that. I'm just going to say thanks, Smokey, for the super chat. Moving on to more important things in life that aren't human turds. Happy holidays to Keemstar, the most festive holiday guy ever, who I'm sure is doing all festive holiday stuff and totally not ruining people's lives right now. All right? In February of 2022, Keemstar would say he was doing a low-cal podcast with Wings of Redemption, Boogie, and DSP, and then ask DSP to unblock him. This would lead people to ask Phil, why was Keemstar talking about him again? Journals is, why does Keemstar talk about you? I have no idea. He's a fucking loser. The guy's, like, he thinks because he makes money that he's some big shit. He's the biggest fucking loser on the internet. He's a scumbag who makes a living ruining people's lives, and he thinks that I give a fuck about him. He can lick my shit for all I fucking care. In fact, he could put his face into my asshole and suck a turd out. That's how much I care about that fucking guy. Months later, Keemstar would announce that Phil was passing up $50,000 for not wanting to meet with him. This would result in Keemstar confronting Phil on his live stream and result in DSP banning him. So Keemstar, should I ban you now for, you know, trying to derail my stream or should I, you know, bother telling everyone what you're talking about derailing my stream or should i just outrage and ban you and move on like what should i do i'm <laughs> just just curious how you'd like me to handle this because you obviously know i'm not going to stop my stream with my viewers to talk to you we've already had the discussion behind the scenes you were unable to follow simple instructions about when i'm free to talk so if you're not an intelligent human who can act like a professional but you're going to come to my stream in the middle of my work to try to talk shit and say stupid stuff. I mean, w w how would you like me to handle it? Just, I'm just curious. Let's hear it. How would you like me to, to you know? Because <laughs> I'm not going to have the discussion with you on my stream. All right? You can either do what we previously discussed, which I told you times that I was free. You ignored me. Okay? <clears throat> All right. So here we go. So now Keemstar is banned from my channel. And I'll probably be banning him from Twitter tonight as well. And I don't have to deal with this nonsense anymore. He's a fucking idiot. Kimso would then make a video explaining what had happened with Phil passing up $50,000. See, ladies and gentlemen, I had a brilliant idea. An absolutely brilliant idea. See, there are three creators I know online who get tons of hate nonstop. And all three of them have money issues. Always going broke. DSP has been bagging fucking the 200 people that show up to his stream to pay all of his bills. Instead of getting a job, he goes to the stream and says, hey guys, my taxes are up. Hey, I gotta pay my gardener. Hey guys. And then he'll blow the little money he gets from his fans on like skins in a video game. And then hit up his audience and be like, hey guys, uh, I forgot about rent. <laughs> I got a brilliant idea. Why don't I take the three of you, put you on a podcast. We will call it the low call podcast, but I had to talk to DSP. So I made uh, some tweets, try to get a hold of him. He was the most difficult person in the world to get a hold of. He's tweeting back and forth publicly telling me, Hey, hit up my email, bitch. I'm a creator. You're a creator. We don't email each other. We just talk. All right. We're equals. We jump on the phone and we have conversations. I couldn't get on the phone with him. He was being so fucking difficult. Hit my email line or email my business. Go fuck yourself with your fucking email. 
So I told him publicly, bro, you're going to miss out on this $50,000 because I would, I figured they'd get about a $50,000 sign-on bonus for the first fucking year of this podcast. Each, all three of them, all three of them. And if I had to front the money, I'd front the money because I know this show would make a lot of money. I know this show would be wildly successful. That's how much I believe in this concept and this idea. So I'm talking to him in the DMs and he goes, listen, I got to stream at this time. I got to distribute this time and da, 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 da. I don't fucking care when you stream. You're streaming in front of 200 people. End your fucking stream. Get the fuck on the phone with me so we can have a conversation about this. I can't. Okay, fine. So I wait till the next day. Try to hit him up. He's fucking streaming. Every time, every time I try to have a fucking conversation with this fucking loser, DSP, he is streaming in front of 200 people making about, I'm going to say on average, uh, $4 an hour. $4 an hour. Motherfuckers working at McDonald's makes more than that. But you can't get on the phone with me for, for a $50,000 for fucking paycheck. Like, this shit is so fucking frustrating. So I give up on it, you know? Even though it's a brilliant idea, and even though you shouldn't give up on your dreams, I give up on it. And I go on YouTube a couple nights ago, and I ended up on DSP stream, and he was there saying that he needed money for fucking something, and he was sitting there asking people with real fucking jobs to pay his bills again. And I got frustrated. And I said, and you won't get on the fucking phone with me in his chat, and he banned me from his chat. This dude is a piece of fucking garbage. If you are watching his shows and you're paying his bills, you're a fucking you're 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 a fucking loser. You should not support this guy. He had an opportunity to make serious money to entertain you and he wouldn't do it. But you're going to still fucking give him $200? You're going to give him $50 to pay his fucking bills? Nah, you got a job. You keep your money. Fuck that guy. DSP would then brag that even though he's at level 1, he's living rent-free in Keemster's head. Keemster would say yes that he's living rent-free because Phil is hustling his fans to pay his rent. Shortly after this, DSP would rename his pre-stream podcast to the level 1 podcast to own the meme of being on level 1, but many would see this as a sad attempt to cope. Then months later, DSP would do a 5-hour reaction to a documentary about Keemster. Throughout the reaction, Phil would criticize Keemster and bring up his own drama with him. Pacing his house, so here he is walking around with his phone like this. Oh, that Phil never got past level 1. Oh, all of us are up here, he's down on level 1, and blah, 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 blah. You know, again, punching down. So, all that happened was, he proved that he's incredibly incredibly lacking of any kind of real self-confidence. The guy is so sensitive, right? That if he doesn't control the situation and things don't go his way, oh, now you're you're on level one, you're beneath me. But you were just going to offer me $50,000 to do something, telling me it was a slam bang idea, you knew it would be popular on the internet, but now I'm on level one, there's, no, you know, I'm a scumbag, I'm dirt on the bottom of your shoe, there's no way you would ever want to deal with me, right? <clears throat> Seeing a little weird, to you, okay? So, the funny part is, you know, I could have cared. I didn't. What I did is I basically took what he said about me. I'm a whole podcast around it. Yeah, I did. It's called The Level 1 Podcast. So now every day I have fun on Level 1, he could be at whatever fucking level he's at, up in the clouds, up his own ass, I don't care. And, uh, and I just have fun with my own viewing audience. And that's, you know, that's the last interaction I had with this guy. I basically don't pay attention to him anymore. I'm sure he brings me up from time to time. I, I don't care. Throughout the months, Keem would continue to antagonize DSP by saying, DSP, I have $100 for you. Contact me in various troll posts on Twitter. During Amaranth's situation regarding her alleged domestic abuse, Keemster would make a tweet that would garner a lot of backlash. The said tweet would be deleted and Keemster would say he deleted it because people were manipulating what he said and he would make a video about it. But DSP would take this as an opportunity to attack Keemster, encouraging people to stop watching him. Gentlemen, it's this simple. Stop watching Keemstar. Stop watching Keemstar. Stop watching Keemstar. Stop watching Keemstar, all right? There's only so many fucking people on the internet that can tell you this guy is scum, he's an exploiter, 
he's used people for personal gain way too many times and he keeps getting away with it because people keep watching him. If people for once would actually use their fucking noggins and say, this guy's a scumbag, stop fucking watching his content, he would disappear. But people keep watching. There will be morons who will go to his fucking show now to see what he has to say. Stop watching Keemstar. He is toxic. He is a virus. He is destroying content creation as a whole. He actually just used the physical and mental abuse of Amaranth as a way to get views on his fucking show. Stop watching him. This would be the last big encounter between Phil and Keemstar for 2022, but six months later, Phil would be interviewed on a podcast, which would lead to Keemstar coming on. DSP would express that he has a negative opinion of Keemstar and then explain his point of view of what had happened with the Local podcast and the $50,000 that he was offered by Keemstar. While Phil was explaining this, Keemstar would be tweeting that Phil was outright lying about the situation. This would lead Keemstar to hop on the call with them and lead to a relatively civil confrontation between the two. We, we set up a scheduled time when we're going to call and we're going to talk about this. And I call you during the scheduled time and you don't answer the phone. And then I get a message back saying, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I was streaming. I told you I work at this time. Well, even if that is true and you were streaming, mm -hmm. that stream is not more important than my phone call and my opportunity. It's not. Well, if someone has a business contact line said, this is the best way to contact me, please do it. But instead, you go to your giant audience on Twitter and you just scream, I want DSP to contact me immediately, $50,000 on the line. It's hostile, it's disrespectful, it's unprofessional. Break or whatever. Um, but the fact that this guy can't call me when I'm giving him the times to call was baffling to me. So first, he won't... The true interaction here, I had to DM him. He wouldn't contact me. I had to DM him. He would not talk further in the DM about what this was until I demanded it. I'm like, dude, just tell me what you're talking about to see if I'm interested. I don't want to get on a call with you unless you just say, what if he had said something I'm totally not interested in at all? I'd be like, no, we're not even bothering with it. He wouldn't, I had to like pull strings to get him to even say, okay, I want you to be like a host on a show. And then he wouldn't even talk any further. He demanded a phone call. I give him my number. I give him the specific times to call. He calls the wrong times. What, what, what I was going to say was sure. the reason I wanted it in writing was very simple. All right. Again, you have to understand, Keem, you have a lot of stuff that's said about you on the Internet. You know that. You've, we've agreed to that. But right? so do you. Yeah, I'm Correct. so sick of hearing but that. From you. It's so frustrating if I'm going to deal that. with this guy, if I'm, I'm going to deal with, with this guy, if I'm going to deal with this guy, I want our conversation in writing. Because what's to stop me from getting on the phone with Keem, having a conversation, and the next thing I know, he completely lies about what we just talked about to get drama on his content. But it's like you're you're using the same kind of shit that people have been using against you, but you're using against Keemstar. It doesn't make any sense. I don't listen. I yeah. don't trust you, the guy. you do I hear it. You do see I don't it, trust right? Him. I do but, not but, trust Keem. Like you don't know anything about me. You you don't, right? But if we had a conversation and you got to learn about me and what I've done and the business opportunities that I've created for this industry for the last 15 years, your opinion of me would be wildly different than you watching a drama documentary about me, something that you be you're, you're against. Like, you know, this is blood money, it was but that's where you got your information from. It was, it was, a, it talked a lot positively about you. Why do you think I watched a drama video about you? That's not what I watched. So it talked, it talked positively about me, but by watching it, you had a negative view of me. Uh, that doesn't, it's no, not I told you, I actually, I respect you immensely, but I don't know after all, the, it's not just that. There's other things too, other people that have said things about you and their dealings with you. I have to kind of be protective of myself and my business and my family. Was there I, ever, I've, I was feel there there's ever risk a story? Of being involved with you. I do. I feel there's a risk that I could be, you know, hang, hung out to dry somehow. Like why, why are you treating me like this? Why, why can't you treat me like a man? And we, why can't we have a conversation? If you came to the conclusion that, no, I don't want to do this. This isn't right for me. That's fine. But you really showed me no respect at all. It was so disrespectful how you were treating me, making me email. I have to call at a certain time. Uh, I'm calling and you're not answering the phone. And then 
when people were asking your your fans asking online, why didn't you do this podcast with Keem? During this whole time, I, I forgot to mention this, he was still talking bad about me publicly. Keem, you just said it. Like, just what you just described is probably the main reason I have a problem with you. You are someone who has no self-awareness and you think that you're the most important thing. You tweeted on your Twitter that I should contact you about a business opportunity. No one does that. They contact the person about the business opportunity directly. We all do it. Everyone. We all do it. Yeah, it, it it's it's at, the internet, Phil. Phil it's like, the internet, man. Well, yeah. You said you've been doing this for 15 years, but like, do, do you not understand the way algorithms work, the way anger is addictive, and how people are hooked on crazy shit? Go ahead. I want no part of that drama. I don't Phil, want to be Phil, on Phil, a podcast you... that is going to be about that. I don't want to be involved with someone that's not, who... That's not what he, he was... He's, I don't even know what the podcast was going to be saying. about. He's being egomaniacal. I have to just listen Phil, to what he just I'm said. Phil, I'm not. Keen, Phil. you just said my whole life should have stopped because you wanted to contact me. Really? I did my not say that. My whole life. You no, just he said, didn't say that. Answer the call at any it. time. Even though Phil, I gave you the times to call me. Answer can I the give call you some context? We have a mutual respect as content creators. We should be able to be in Twitter DMs and then get on a phone call. And you didn't treat me like that. You treated me like dirt. This is not about me thinking I'm God. This is about how you treated me in those Twitter DMs. Keem, you, you, I gave you the times to call. You called at different times. And we never had another interaction ever again. How was I disrespectful to you? It would seem after this that any beef between the two of them would be settled. But it would be revealed by one of the lol cows, Boogie, that Phil was trying to go behind Keemster's back and do the show without him. Do you, um... Do you have any relationship with Phil at all? Not really. Uh, we're trying to put together a show, uh, that Lol Cow podcast that Keemstar mm -hmm. pitched, and then uh, Phil's like, oh, no, I don't want to work with Keemstar. I don't want a $50,000 paycheck. I don't want to pay off all my debts and taxes. I'd rather be miserable. I'd rather sit in a corner and cry all over myself. You know, I'd rather s bitch for a living, uh, which also cost me a 50K payday, which also cost Wings a 50K payday. And, and I could use 50K, and I know Wings could use it. So he screwed everybody over. So I think he's trying to make it up for this with us trying to work with a, another third party that's not Keemstar. But I, I, I don't know if he'll follow through. Uh, I don't feel like I don't feel like Phil wants his problem solved. I think Phil, I think Phil wants to marinate in the misery of his own creation. Keemstar would then revive the show and bring Wings and Boogie back onto the show, but demand that Phil apologize to him within two days or be kicked off the Lolcal podcast. As you can imagine, DSP did not apologize and Keemstar would kick him off the podcast. This would lead to DSP to make his own response video saying how can he be kicked off a show that he isn't on. So all, I, all of a sudden people are like, Keem just tweeted about you. He says, He's kicking you off the lol cow cast, and now they're looking for a third host to join Boogie and Wings. You're kicking me off the show that I'm not on. That's an interesting concept. I've actually never heard that one before, that you can actually get fired when you don't work for someone. Because people are now uh, coming to my stream to tell me that you're fired from the Lal Cow cast. I'm not on the Lal Cow cast. I never wanted to be. Like, what are you talking about, right? If you want to talk about delusion and being egotistical, someone who actually thinks that because they wanted me on their show that I was on it, even though we never even had the discussion about being on it and I never wanted to be on it, that I was on it and now they can fire me. Uh, you're insane. Like, you're literally insane. Anyone will tell you, you're nuts. That's fucking crazy. You, I was never part of your team. I was never employed by you. You can't kick me off of anything I'm not in. All right? You're nuts. <clears throat> King would then criticize Phil for not being able to respond to his emails, but be able to make multiple response videos. During this time, DSP would comment how the show was dead and it was never going to happen, but eventually the Local Podcast did go live. It would take the Local Podcast six months before their first episode premiered. During this time, Turkey Tom, one of the people on the Local Podcast, would make a documentary on Phil and make a response video saying he was done milking Phil for content. Turkey Tom saying he was done milking Phil would enrage DSP into making a response video discussing the Local Podcast and being milked. So basically, Boogie said this to me, again, I'm paraphrasing, and he said something like, you know, 
when you look at people like working with Keemstar or working with other people on YouTube, this drama content on YouTube, he says, you, I, I, you know, you look at it like, like Walmart. Like, you know Walmart has a ton of blood on their hands, but you still shop there, right? Because it benefits you. It's the best benefit to you and your family, the lowest prices, right? It's that you get decent quality products, the lowest prices. Everyone still shops there. Despite the fact you know this is not a great company, you still kind of just do it. You bite the bullet, right? I said, Boogie, I want you to understand something. I don't shop at Walmart. I never have. In my entire life, I've, I've shopped at Walmart once. And it was at the height of the popularity of Street Fighter 4. They were the only store that had Street Fighter 4 joysticks. I don't like Walmart because I know that they're a scumbag company. I know that they mistreat their employees. I know that they don't pay enough. I know that they ruin the towns they move into. They have absolutely no regard for anything around them. That's YouTube. In a nutshell. That's literally YouTube. And that's this lol cow culture on YouTube. What you found is you found people who are so desperate right they need to make money in some way they can't just operate anymore and have a life on youtube for some reason maybe they you know their popularity is waned maybe they just made a ton of mistakes or whatever and the only way that they can get attention on youtube is by creating drama so what they do is they create the drama they know the drama's toxic they know that it's harmful they know that it's not good but that's the only way that they can get by so they sit there and they create drama and then everyone else sits outside and says ha now we capitalize and we jump on this and we make two hour documentaries and we do podcasts about them and we slam them and we rip them a new butthole and we constantly make fun of them and we meme on them and we milk them. Milk them. That kind of, and the fact that you can just nonchalantly say something like that. Oh yeah, I'm done milking someone today. I want you to know how disgusting that sounds. You're milking a human. Okay? Not even for sus, you're not milking them for milk, you're milking them for profits, for money. And every time you do that, you hurt them. But you don't care. There's no, no, there's no reason, no, no quality, you know, no, no moral compass here. Who cares, right? You're dehumanizing the person. You're turning them. You're literally categorizing them as a, as an animal, not a human. You're, you've degraded them to the point that they're just cattle. All right. That's really fucked up. It is. It's completely messed up. It. I can't believe people think that's okay. Right? When you're watching that lol cow show, I don't need toxic popularity for making bad choices, you know, and, and being milked. I can't believe that you would even say that in a video and think that's, oh yeah, I'm milking people today. Like, huh? Like what? That's, you think that's fine to talk like that? That's not fine. That's really messed up. Like, I mean it. Go talk to a psychiatrist and tell them you taught you milked someone today. And let's see how they respond to what you said. They're going to be like, dude, what did you just say? Like, huh? But this is it. It's been normalized on YouTube. This behavior has been normalized by people like Keemstar. So it's acceptable now. No, it's not. It's really not. You have to understand. Normal people think this is endlessly fucked up. They don't agree with this culture, this spinning toilet culture of toxic shit. It's awful. And the, the quicker, the absolute quicker you get out of this toxic vortex, the better. Especially for someone like Turkey Tom, who seems like he's got his head on his shoulders. He's smart. He's intelligent. He could make great content. But he has to get out of the toxic vortex now before you're stuck in it forever. Because guess what? You'll be the next lol cow. You'll be the next one who 10 years down the line, you're desperate for content. And what are you going to do to get it? Well, all you ever did was make fun of people. No one cares about you anymore. Now what are you supposed to do? Right? You're the next one on the list, man. Keeps up with making edited video trolling Phil saying that DSP was endorsing the Lol Cow podcast. Because I'm the Lol Cow, right? With the Lol Cow podcast. Okay? <laughs> That's what people want to be involved in to literally just be a bullying group. I mean, it should really be called We Bully People Podcast. That's all it is, the bullying podcast. We just bully people all day like it's a fucking schoolyard of people beating down on people. That's what the show is, right? There's no respect. There's no intention of actually helping people or doing something positive. That's a toxic show, that's the point. Boogie and Wings, they shop at Walmart, right? Anything to get ahead, anything to make a buck, anything to fucking get them to a position where they're, they're doing something because they need that, right? 
I don't need that. I'm, I'm successful. I have a business. Except that last night, I got the notification that I have no money. And I was like, that really sucks. You know, every money, every day, the money I get from tips, I'm transferring to my bank account. Um, so essentially, I'm, I must be, I'm overdrawn. Um, for them to tell me that I have that, you know, the, the notice that you are, you know, no balance or whatever. When you're watching that lol cow show, it's, oh yeah, I'm milking people today. Like, huh? Like, what? That's, you think that's fine? You're milking a human, okay? Not even for sus, you're not milking them for milk, you're milking them for profits, for money. You're dehumanizing the person. You're turning them, you're literally categorizing them as a as an animal. The name of the show is the lol cow show or the lol cow podcast. Because I'm the lol cow, right? The lol cow podcast would of course post clips anytime DSP came up as a topic. I really feel this is the difference between myself and the other people who people consider lol cows. Here's the difference. Boogie and Wings, they shop at Walmart, right? Anything to get ahead, anything to make a buck, anything to fucking get them to a position where they're, they're doing something because they need that, right? I don't need that. I'm, I'm successful. I have a business. I'm good. Phil is just one of the very human, very few human beings in the world I actively dislike. I think I hate that guy. Everything that I hate about myself, I see in Dark Side Phil amplified <laughs> up to a level. Right? Fair enough. Unhealthiness, yeah. mentally unaware, oblivious, uh, delusions of grandeur. Everything I have a little bit, he has all of it. And the local podcast tweet would state that they would continue talking about Phil, especially Boogie, who will try to mention him in nearly every episode. I've tried to watch Phil's show. You know, the only thing that Phil's show does, it bores me to sleep to begin with. Nobody's better than me and I ain't no better than nobody. Okay, I learned that in Head Start. That was fourth grade we learned that shit in fourth grade, okay? We're all just people trying to make it work, Phil. All right? By the way, Phil, this is my message directly to you, Phil. And I want to make it abundantly clear. You don't think you're part of this podcast, right? Except every episode we've uploaded, you've talked about it. All right? It's every you've single one. You've talked about it. You've tweeted about it. And guess what? I'm going to bring you up in every single episode from here on out. We're going to have a segment where I talk about how you e beg this week about the stupid shit. You said about me, about Wings, about Tommy, about the show. I'm going to make sure. And I know, Phil, watch. Look at me when I tell you this. You're going to respond every single time. I know you will. I dare you to try not to. This is where we end currently. But as we can imagine, this feud will continue into the future. All because DSP had to make a comment on Keemstar's retirement. As always, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing. And thank you for all my members. And a shout out to Francisco Ramos Mejia.